In this podcast, we're going to talk about electron configuration. All right, I want you to first understand that electron configuration is a sequence on the periodic table. So we can read the periodic table like a book, starting up here at the top left and going across from left to right and then to the next line. And we can determine where all of the electrons are located for a particular element. But we need to understand what this actually means first. All right, so atoms are arranged with the nucleus in the middle and the electrons are on the outside. These electrons are arranged with um, energy levels. And the energy levels basically are describing how far away from the nucleus electrons are. Now, we have determined that electrons, um, that only a certain number of them can occupy each ring, okay, or each energy level. So, the first energy level can only hold two electrons. The second can hold eight. The third can hold 18. The fourth, 32. And then the fifth, at this point, we just know of 32. All right, so the scientist Bohr, Niels Bohr, um, his model of the atom described these electrons in the principal energy levels and said that they were in a circular orbit, kind of like how the planets revolve around the sun in our solar system. So the electrons orbit around the nucleus. And we found out later that Bohr's model worked perfectly for the element hydrogen, but it didn't explain any of the other elements. So then the idea of orbitals came along. An orbital is basically a probability map, 90% probability of where an electron can be found in an atom. It still maintains the energy level concept, and these are our sublevels, but then we have the first energy level, the first set distance away from the nucleus, has only one orbital, okay? The second energy level is going to have two orbitals in it. The third energy level has three orbitals, and the fourth has four orbitals. So these are spaces where an electron can be found. All right, the lowest energy orbital is called the S orbital. It's shaped like a sphere. It can hold two electrons. It's a very low energy orbital. The second orbital is called the P orbital. The p orbital is shaped kind of like an infinity sign or like a dumbbell. Um, there are three p orbitals per each sublevel. So starting with the second sublevel, um, the second energy level, you get three p orbitals. And the orbitals go along the x, y, and z axis. So if you imagine a three-dimensional you have X, which is, you know, side to side. You have Y, which is up and down. And then Z would be like out of the board and into the board, okay? Or if you held one arm in front of you and one behind you, that would be your Z axis. So those are the three P energy um, sublevels. And then they all add together to make one big P orbital, okay? And each of the p orbitals can hold two electrons. So we're talking about two, two, and two. So it's a total of six electrons. Now the p orbital is higher energy orbital than the s. Here is a three-dimensional way to look at it. So there's our three p orbitals. The next energy level is the d orbital. There are five d orbitals. Each of those also hold two electrons. Um, so that's two times five, 10 electrons total. This is an even higher energy than the P. You see that the shapes, they get real funny here, especially the last one. And then you end up with this big conglomeration when they put them all together. And the last orbital is the F orbital. You can guess it, there are seven F orbitals. They have even more peculiar shapes. And I'm not even going to attempt to put them together because it's so complex. Each holds two electrons, so that's a total of 14 electrons that the f orbitals can hold. Altogether, you have the 1s, the 3ps, the 5ds, and the 7fs. Okay, here's a little summary chart. 
tells you how many um, there are. The total number of electrons, so 2, 6, 10, 14, and the total, which is 1, 2, 3, and 4. All right, now if you go back and you compare this to the periodic table, let's go back up. Get our periodic. All right, so if you look here, here's our s orbital. If you remember how many total electrons there were, there were two electrons per s orbital. One, two boxes. Hmm. Well, here's the piece. If you remember, p had six total electrons per energy level. If you come across, one, two, three, four, five, six. Hmm. Another coincidence. All right, here's our d's. If you count across the d's, you have five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten d's matches up perfectly with the number of electrons. And you can guess it, F, if you count it all the way up, to coincide with the number of electrons. So the pattern matches perfectly. All right, now to complete electron configuration, you always start at the lowest level, which is 1s. And again, like I said, you read it like a book. So you read across the rows, and then when you reach here, you move to the next line. Okay, and you're trying to basically, we're writing. Um, a notation that describes where all of the electrons are located within an element. So let's talk about the electron configuration for the element sodium. So this is sodium right here. That's where he's located. So we're going to start up here and we're going to write 1s. Now how many 1s's? We have 1, 2, so that's 1s, 2, and then we read down. We have 2s box. Now how many 2s boxes do we have? one, two, two S boxes. Okay, now 2P comes next, if you read straight across. 2P has one, two, three, four, five, six boxes. So that's 2P6. And then sodium's element is right here, so that's 3S, and we stopped at the first box, so that's 3S1. Okay, so if you look at the um, code that I have written on the all right, so here I'm showing you um, a similar notation to the one that we just wrote for sodium. But basically, these big numbers, they tell us the energy level, okay? Um, how far away from the nucleus it is. So the rings, one, two, three, four. Okay, now the S and the second thing, the letter, that tells us the actual orbital sublevel that it's in, the S and the P and all that. These top numbers, these little exponent things, that's actually the number of electrons that are in that sublevel. So you're basically denoting exactly where these electrons are. So let's go look in sodium again. All right, so we see that sodium has two electrons in the first energy level in the s orbital, two electrons in the second energy level in the s orbital, six electrons in the second energy level p orbital and one electron in the third energy level s orbital. Okay, and the total number of electrons for sodium, sodium's atomic number is 11, so it means it has 11 total uh, electrons as well because it's neutral. So if you add all these top numbers, that should be 11. So 2 plus 2 is 4 plus 6 plus 1 is 11. Okay, so it all matches up. So let's go see what this actually describes um, the shape of all these orbitals for sodium. Okay. All right, so we know that first we have the 1s. Okay, so there's our 1s. We have two electrons that are in this orbital, in this space. Then we had a 2s. So then we have two electrons occupying this space and the two electrons in the 1s underneath it. Next, we're going to have a 2p. Now there are three of those. Each of them holds two electrons. And then lastly, we have the 3s, where only one electron occupies sodium. Now, there is a space for another electron, but at this point, sodium just has one electron there, one outside electron. Okay, so you can imagine all these things together in there. 
So if you cut away the pi piece, all that stuff is still in there, all those electrons, and that's how they're arranged. So basically this notation is describing how these electrons are arranged in this three-dimensional structure. Here's another picture of it. So you have the nucleus in the very center, the 1s orbital closest to the nucleus, then the 2s orbital, then the 2p's, and then lastly the 3s. Okay, so they just come out more and more and more as the energy level increases, the distance from the nucleus also increases. All right, the Aufbau principle describes the fact that electrons are going to fill the lowest available energy level and orbital first. So that's why we always start with 1s, because an electron is going to go to 1s first, because 1s is the lowest energy. Then it's going to go to 2s, because 2s is the next lowest energy. And then 2p, and so on. All right, so basically when we write electron configuration, we're representing where all the electrons in that atom are. Remember what the all of the different parts of the configuration actually mean, okay? You see 1s1, that tells you you're looking at the 1s orbital, and there's only one electron. That's the configuration for hydrogen, so that's where hydrogen's one electron is. All right, the poly exclusion principle and Hund's rule are two other important um, ideas uh, that are related to electron configuration. The poly exclusion, exclusion principle says that when you have those two electrons in the same orbital, they have opposite spins. One spins up, the other spins down. That's because, remember, they have a negative charge. So these opposite spins allow them to occupy the same uh, orbital, the same space, essentially, without interfering with one another, without those repulsive forces being in there. Hun's rule says that if multiple orbitals are available, so like the p's, there are three different p orbitals, that each of the orbitals gets an electron before anybody gets two electrons. So there's three p orbitals, so those three p orbitals each get one electron each before anybody gets a second electron, okay? So they're going to occupy the um, one that is empty first. I kind of think about the school bus. When you get on the school bus, you're going to go to the seat that's empty first before you go to looking for a seat that has maybe one person in it. All right, here is another way to look at it. This is a different pattern. This is not my favorite pattern. I prefer just to go based off of the periodic table, but you can use this pattern. Okay, now there's one more thing I want to point out to you. All right, then the last thing I want to point out to you is notice that after you fill the 3p orbital, you move to the 4s. Then you move back to the 3d. d orbitals, there are five orbitals, needs 10 electrons to completely fill it up. So it is going to be, it's not going to be near as stable. Um, and so it's very high energy. 4s, s only needs two electrons to be um, completely filled. So it's much more low energy, even though it's in the next ring up. So basically, you go from the third ring, or the third energy level away, in the p orbital, then you jump up an energy level to the 4s, fill in two electrons, and then you go and back down to the third energy level and start putting electrons in the d, okay? Then you can move back to the fourth energy level and start entering electrons into the 4p. Notice that when you get to the 6s, something else happens. Now you go to the 4f orbital. Okay, f is an even higher energy orbital than d because it has seven orbitals within it. So it's going to be a very high energy. So you go 6s, then back to the fourth energy level to fill up the f, and then you go back to the fifth energy level to get the d, and then you go back to 6p. Okay, so it gets much, much more complicated the more electrons you add.